Hi everyone, uh, in this video I'd like to talk through some of the progress I've been making with the Keep Talking project um, and in particular how it's looking um, because I've been spending a lot of time over the past couple of months um, just rounding off the design uh, and trying to understand how the whole thing would look and, and come together. Um, as you know I've been working on programming some of the modules and, and then designing them one by one um, but in November, December really, um, I switched focus to looking at uh, the outer part of the bomb case uh, and the widgets as well, so designing those, um, printing them uh, and then seeing how it all looks and making a few other kind of small um, aesthetic changes to the frame of the bomb itself. But although it's not finished, I think it's in a really good place to, to, to see that progress and to see how it looks. Um, and I have to say I'm really happy with how this looks so far. Um, being really, um, spending a lot of time um, trying to make it look as much like the game as possible uh, and I think that's finally starting to pay off at this point. Um, but here we go, here it is from, from one side um, and I've got just enough modules to fill in that one side uh, as I don't have any, any blank spaces. Um, and of course I could make duplicates but I, I haven't. Um, and moving this to the side just so you get a Bit more of a 3D perspective of how everything looks. Um, there we go. Um, so, so one gap here for a widget. Um, but I'll break it down for what I've done um, and, and talk through each of these parts of the frame because I think I might have posted pictures or, or talked it through uh, individually in the past on a Discord, but I haven't really gone through the whole design um, of the bomb, the frame. And, and, and how the pieces all really come together. So I'll try and cover that in this video. Um, so on the bomb itself, the whole thing, you get a couple of questions on uh, how big it is. So I think now that the design's pretty much there and, and, and pretty finalized, um, I'll just cover that quite briefly. So each of the modules is uh, 13 centimeters wide and tall. Uh, and the frame that I'm using is, is two centimeters um, Kind of wide. So all in all the bomb is about um, 20 centimeters deep, about 36 centimeters tall uh, and 51 wide. So it's um, a fairly big thing, uh, much bigger than the bomb in the game I believe. Um, but again those design choices were based on a number of factors really. Um, you know a couple of them being the size of the salmon buttons that were available um, and the size of this display. So the display is, um, is 12 centimeters. Um, the frame around it is, is one centimeter wide, roughly. Um, and that, that timer digs into to most of the frame until it's almost coming out the side. So a very tight um, design on that. Um, and about as small as I could make these modules. So, so trying to keep the size down, but um, having to work within the limitations of the, the components I've got there. Um, right, so we'll start with the um, outer part of the bomb and I'll start uh, disassembling it as we go and, and talking through the different pieces. Um, but I will just pull this off as it's, it's not attached um, and talk through this frame piece. Um, so this is one of the, the latest parts that I've been doing is, is printing, designing these um, panels to fill out the frame um, and then also the widgets themselves. Um, so on the panels, they're simply held in by the, the frame aluminium pieces. Um, as those are bolted together, there's nowhere for the, the frame to really escape as they are held in place by the extrusion. Um, and they're printed in two pieces. Um, so you've got the, the main piece uh, and then this small panel, which is the base in which the widgets sit, which are just bolted together. Um, and that was just through um, from ease of printing. Um, and then a couple of other choices here. Um, I've printed little tabs, um, kind of um, structural plates, I, I suppose they, they are. Um, that's just simply a, a decoration that's present in the bomb, but I think it finishes off and, and, and makes good use of these spaces because of course, um, this is much shorter than this end piece simply because if I pop it back on the bomb, the uh, the size of this middle panel is the size of the, the module, so 13 centimeters. But the next one is the size of the module uh, and a bit of the frame as well. So this is a slightly larger plate on the outside 
Uh, and so this, this little plate does a really good job of just kind of filling in those blank areas. Okay, and in terms of how the widgets actually connect uh, and stay in place here, I'll just take this one out uh, and we can have a look. So on the inside, you'll see that in the middle there is a small magnet um, and that is what's keeping these in place. So, you know, the bomb can be thrown around. Um, might not be good for it, but the widgets won't accidentally fall out during gameplay. Um, and that works with um, a small design feature here where we've got a tab on the um, on one side of the widgets that will go into um, a small crease in the panel so that's just slid in like that load in place uh, and the magnets keep that in place but if I were to pull this back out you'll also see that there is a row of um, a row of female sockets here of female headers uh, and some of the widgets will use this to either draw power um, or be refreshed and get some data from the widget ESP controller. But I'll go through these one by one and explain how this works because a lot of how I've implemented the widgets is quite manual uh, and will need a kind of a lot of human intervention to make work rather than be automated by the ESP. Again, that's something that I might change in the future, but for now, um, I'll just go down this route and um, you know, maybe when everything's up and working, then I can revisit that and, and and maybe kind of update that if that becomes too burdensome during the game and, and slow things down um, through setup. But here we've certainly got a blank uh, widget. Um, again, in the game, you'll only really need five widgets. Um, and there are, um, let me think, 14 possible places to insert this. Um, so we'll have a lot of uh, need for blanks in this bomb. So that's worth saying actually that on the top there's obviously six, four on the side. The far side of the bomb will have another four slots, so there's 14 possible places to put them. Um, just not on the bottom of the bomb, so that's one thing that I'm, I'm not implementing. I'm reserving the space on the bottom of the bomb for things like the um, speakers, power, and um, other bits of infrastructure as well. Um, I think that's a, a fair design decision because this bomb is so heavy and will be quite difficult to manoeuvre um, while manipulating it. So um, probably not a good idea for people to turn it upside down to read the serial number on the bottom. So we'll just keep keep all of that blank. Uh, but moving on with the widgets. Next we have the indicator widget. Uh, this is a prototype of how that might look. So here it is here. Um, you've got the lamp here, which has an LED underneath it uh, and a space for the indicator label. Uh, and that is not controlled by a screen. That's something that someone will um, insert a card into. So when the game has been set up, the phone app will tell you what the indicator is and if that lights on or off. So you'll in the, uh, insert the same um, label here as the phone app tells you um, and turn the lamp on manually. Uh, and that's done with a little switch hidden on the uh, inside here. So that's just flipped backwards and forwards into the correct position. And you've got two pins for power. So again, when that is inserted into the bomb, the pins will make contact with the headers, draw power, uh, and that will turn the LED on if that's what's needed. Um, and the last real one to show here is the serial display. I'll just take this one out. Um, and I'm sure you've seen this before in some of the other videos. Um, I, I did this quite a while ago, um, but finally designed the, the widgets around this. Uh, and this is a pretty big um, board underneath this really. So the, the size of the widgets themselves are just a bit bigger than the, the serial display underneath. It's, it's, it's on a circuit board about that big really. Um, so that was the limitation for the size of the widgets. And um, I tried to have the design put the screen as close to the top as possible so you can kind of see through it because this plastic turns out to be slightly transparent, uh, translucent, sorry, when it's uh, thin. So that's just one layer um, of the print there. Um, but with that being at the surface, it, it looks two dimensional, almost like it is a sticker. 
um, and the feature here is that you've got all eight of these pins being used. So unlike the indicator that just needed the power, you need a lot of data pins, um, busy pins, interrupt pins here for the e-ink display to work. So this uses all eight of those header pins. Um, but that's all I've got for the moment. Obviously we've still got the batteries and a couple different variations of the ports to design. But um, with some of the, the harder ones designed, that shouldn't be too much more trouble to do um, and should follow the same uh, kind of uh, look uh, as those other ones. OK, moving on to the modules. Um, I think you should have all seen these modules before in some of their own videos when I've been designing them. Um, but I don't think I've really talked through the way they interact with the case. Um, and again, that might have been shared in some, some pictures or comments previously. Um, but I'll just cover it in this video as well, so it's it's all here. So the uh, original intention was to have modules swappable, um, and as you've seen, they all sit in their own boxes. So if I just pull out Simon, um, you'll see that on the inside of the case here, um, and I'll just pull this around, which will help you see it. You've got this black plate, um, which is just about two centimeters thick, and um, in it you've got a couple of magnets which line up with the magnets on the module boxes, as well as uh, an eight, uh, sorry, a nine-pin serial connector, which again lines up with the um, connector on the modules. And, and so it's very simple to insert and remove modules if you need to set up a new game. You just simply push it in. Uh, it should be that easy. Um, I've only got a couple of mag magnets holding in each module. They are pretty light at the moment. Some of them might be heavier if they need a motors in um, or bigger screens, for example. Um, but that's something that I can modify through testing. Um, these do take a little bit of force to come out um, and I am worried that if someone nudges the bomb that might knock out a module on the other side so um, I might add a couple more magnets but again the, there's, I can double these magnets up um, and that should be plenty strong to keep, keep the modules in place. If I just remove some more You can see that it's just a series of those panels in the middle. Um, they're all the same um, and they will be wired up to um, a little circuit in the middle on the bottom that just will connect all of those together. So each of those modules can receive power, um, the CAN bus messages, um, and that's all they really need. I'm not using all nine of those pins, um, probably just about five uh, at the moment. But again, these modules don't have anything in them at the moment, so unfortunately I can't show this working. Um, I really need to design PCBs um, to take the breadboard um, versions of these modules and put them in a nice neat little package for these boxes. And lastly, if I remove the main part of the bomb, we're left with the other half of the outer case. And there's not much to see here. Um, this is the old version of the outer case that I certainly haven't upgraded. Um, the difference is um, I had originally smooth um, extrusions for the middle, whereas I have since gone with um, the normal extrusion with the, the profile in it here. Uh, and again, this will emulate the, the kind of crack down the centre of the bomb because it appears in the game like the bomb's made from two halves which are, are bolted together with these plates. So I've since gone to that. Um, so these need to be changed. Um, and also we've got these small extrusions with profile in them. Um, those are going to house the feet. Not quite sure what I'm going to use for the feet just yet. Got a couple of options that I have found online, but I haven't purchased anything for them yet. Um, and one of the change actually that I have done 
is um, designed and printed a little bit of plastic to um, finish off the profile uh, before we had some base um, rough edges where you could actually kind of see the profile. Can't take these off the <laughs> really snug fit. Um, but again, that just gives it a nice clean look there, which is a, a good change. But as I said before, the widgets themselves will only fit on the sides and top of the bomb. So in the bottom, um, I'm planning on installing the speakers. So these speakers are just short of four centimeters. They will just about fit underneath the frame that goes on top. <laughs> Try to demonstrate that now. So that comes just under that profile there. Very tight squeeze, but um, hopefully those speakers will sit in there quite, quite nicely um, and generate a good bit of sound because they come from um, some old PC speakers I had that I took apart. And also in the middle, on the bottom, there's going to be the power and really a bit of the infrastructure. So we need all of those cables that connect the module boxes to be wired up to each other so they can communicate uh, and get power. Uh, as well as the last ESP, the widget ESP, uh, and that's the one that will um, be hooked up to the speakers to produce the sound, uh, as well as update the serial display. Um, so there we go, that is the current state of the design. Um, a lot of work so far, but still a lot more to do. Um, but you start to get a picture of how this will all look. And, um, and potentially play it as well. So I'll keep you posted on more progress. Next up, I think I've got the rest of the widgets to design and print. Um, I've got a couple more modules that I have working on the breadboards that I have not designed. So we've got um, memory, we've got, well, I can't think that's been a while. We've got venting gas, so we haven't designed any of the needy modules yet, which could be a good bit of design, um, as I don't have anything for that that I can kind of copy paste between them like I have with the standard modules. And we've got Morse as well, that's the last one. Couldn't quite remember it now. But yeah, thanks very much for watching. Um, I'll keep you updated with any more progress uh, and see you soon.